Welcome back, in this training, let's learn about coiled tubing manufacturing technology. In this training session, let's review the definition of coiled tubing. History of coiled tubing. Evolution of coiled tubing including pipe size, materials and equipment. Manufacturing process for coiled tubing including welding process. Coiled tubing specifications such as materials, purchasing and testing. So, what is coiled tubing? Coiled tubing was developed in the early 60s as well services tool. Coiled tubing has a continuous conduit for fluids and gases, and is a capable of running in and out of a well bore under pressure. Coiled tubing was developed due to the desire to work on well bores having pressure. Speed and economy have also emerged to be key advantages for application of coiled tubing. So why we need to use coiled tubing? Well, we need to use coiled tubing if we want to achieve the following. Firstly, due to the needs for live well operations, which will be safer because no tool joints to be made up and faster because no need to bleed down pressure. Secondly, we can achieve faster tripping time, especially useful if multiple tool runs are required. Thirdly, we don't need to kill the well, which help us to avoid formation damaged. And lastly, due to environmental reasons, coiled tubing equipment has smaller footprint than a rig and no kill fluid required. So where is coiled tubing typically used? We can use coiled tubing in gas wells, because they are live wells. Coiled tubing can be used in offshore wells, as rig costs are high. Where electric line, slick line has limitations in horizontal wells, coiled tubing will be a solution. And coiled tubing can be used in any land location where the rig costs are high, depths lead to long trip times for drill pipe, kill fluids are expensive, and formations are easily damaged very sensitive. This chart showing the evolution of coiled tubing. Half inch coiled tubing was introduced in 1962. Three and a half inches normally is the largest size for conventional working coiled tubing units. Four and a half inches and larger are normally used for continuously milled pipelines. This chart shows the evolution of coiled tubing string construction. In 1945, it was 30 feet butt welded length for the Pluto project. In 1965, we had 250 feet butt welded length. In 1983, it was 1,000 feet butt welded length. In 1986, we had 3,500 feet butt welded length. And in 1987, quality tubing first time ever used bias welding for continuously milled tubing. There are two type of welds for manufacturing coiled tubing. The first one is butt welding. And the second type is continuous tubing milling process, which involves with bias welding. Butt welding was how coiled tubing originally made prior to 1987. Nowadays, we only use butt weld as a repair splice, cutting out a bad section of tube, then butt weld back together. Butt welding applies only on round pipe. Butt weld is not accepted on new pipe purchases unless approved by purchaser. Butt weld process involves with butting up with proper heat sinks installed and spacing of chill blocks. This graphic shows the heat affected zone and the thickening at the weld bead. External weld bead is removed, but there is internal weld bead remaining. Butt weld was generally at the location of coiled tubing string failure. As the coiled tubing was bent over the reel and gooseneck, the butt weld is exposed to concentrated narrow band of stresses, the entire weld is stressed when bending, tension on upper half and compression on lower half. Heat affected zone is a hardness riser and greatly affects fatigue. It is very rigid during a cycle process. This photo showing weld bead on outside of pipe, then on inside of pipe. We can have a better results on field welds with orbital equipment. All coiled tubing welds require quality assurance procedures and x-ray to confirm that weld is good. Photo showing x-ray device for inspecting tube to tube butt welds. Capable of seeing 0.002 inch hole. Photo shows an example of butt weld radiograph. The major improvement in coiled tubing manufacturing used in 1987 by quality tubing. Flat strips of steel are cut at angle and clamped in place butting up the two strip of steel together prior to welding. This is before formed into a tube, 
so only used in the manufacturing process of new pipe. The benefits of weld preparation. Heat affected zone is spread out longitudinally along coiled tubing, then is removed by stress relieving prior to forming the coiled tubing. Dabs added to have start and stop point off of the coiled strip, allows for adjustments to weld heat and penetration and build up of weld material at the end of the weld is easily removed. Coiled tubing normalized post treatment. Weld seam flash removal after the weld easily done on top and bottom of weld strip. Simulation of actual weld process. Post bias weld inspection, x rayed. Hardness checks on the weld bead and area around weld. Visual, MPI, etc. Clean up the weld, weld is grinded down to match thickness of parent material. Photo showing actual strip bias weld, shows the junk tab on top, bottom one has been removed. Bottom of strip has been grinded to remove flash seam. To manufacture pipe they use approximately 3.05 inches to 1 inch ratio of strip length to desired outer diameter. Unlike butt welds, there are no weld seams on the inside of the pipe. All welds are x-rayed. Safety feature of bias weld. While butt weld has 90 degree to principal stress, bias weld has fracture, crack propagates to tube body, which is resistant to tearing and much better fatigue life. Once formed into tube, weld is formed into a helix, so during bending, only one portion of the weld is exposed to bending stresses. Distributed weld reduces local material changes. No reduction on fatigue life. Pipe then goes through the roller mill. Continuous casting process, 2 inches by 48 inches slab, approximately 50,000 pounds from same heat. Rollers reduced to specified wall thickness. Steel coils are stored prior to slitting. Large inventory of raw product available. Coils weigh approximately 50,000 pounds length depends on thickness. Length depends on thickness. Range from 1,000 feet, 0.250 inch, up to 3,500 feet, 0.087 inch. Strips received to coiled tubing manufacturer. Slit coils delivered prior to strip bias welding. Cut to order. Photo showing the strip steel payoff turret. Spool strip material to bias welder. Each grade, yield strength, of strip material requires specialized weld procedure. Completed weld from runoff tab of strip to runoff tab. 90% of weld defects are at beginning or ending of weld itself where arc stops and starts. Runoff tabs are same material as tube. Tungsten inert gas welding, shielding gas, argon, around weld area. Uses a filler metal to form the weld. Weld starts and ends on tabs. Small amount of approved filler metal. Later on, most removed when weld ground. Same thickness across weld. Welding creates a heat affected zone which creates a stress riser when bending the pipe onto the drum. This stress is relieved by heating the welded area. Simple grinding wheel is used for removing excess weld bead, or weld crown, from the top and bottom of the strip. All bias welds are x-rayed and approved by a quality control specialist. Check dimensions. Thickness should be within 0.005 inch of nominal. Strip width measurement. Ensure strip width is consistent at three locations prior to tube welding. And within strip width requirement. Hardness measurement. Measured in weld, heat affected zone and parent metal. Measurements will be stored. After all of the bias welds are formed, strip is collected onto these spools. Final strip assembly, which is taken to the mill to form coiled tubing. Collector spools ride on pocket of air, so can be pushed by hand into place. High frequency induction electric resistance welding. Seam anneal at 1650 degree Fahrenheit. 
semenil and air cooling is normalizing process. Refines grain of weld. Photo showing tube forming section. Sheets of steel are formed at the steel plant and rolled to correct thickness. Rolls of steel are slit to the correct width for desired diameter of coiled tubing. Strips are bias welded together making up total length of coiled tubing. Strip is then fed into the tubing mill. Flat strip steel is cold rolled into tubing. Reaching electromagnetic reduction weld which forms the seam weld. Seam is heat treated annealing to reduce the stress from electromagnetic reduction weld process. Controls for tubing mill. Finally, strip storage of pipe manufacturing facility. Longitudinal weld takes place. Electromagnetic reduction weld creates heat at high resistance on edges of pipe, then rollers squeeze together fusing the ends together forming a tube. Squeezed metal creates a seam internally and externally, this flash removed externally. Heat treatment. Inspection. Knife cuts off material that is extruded from the welding process, any impurities on edge of strip are pushed out of the weld. Removing internal seam weld is optional, and not common for standard work strings. Used for permanent installation such as production tubing. Longitudinal weld annealing. High frequency eddy current heating of seam weld to austenite grain structure. Temperature is around 1650 degree Fahrenheit. If eddy current inspection detects a problem, the pipe is automatically marked with paint but milling process continues. Pipe is then later inspected to analyze the detection area. Three wheel counters used for length measurements. If all agree plus or minus a few feet, then use average. Otherwise, we'll remove one counter that is out of range. The fourth wheel in photo works in conjunction to eddy current inspection, and provides the depth when a fault occurs and marks the pipe with paint. Previous tensile tests on material are used to help set the correct temperature for the stress relief. Pyrometer is optical temperature sensor and automatically feeds into control system for constant temperature control. Optical pyrometer going into full body stress relief typically 1100 to 1300 degree Fahrenheit. Also optical pyrometer on bias weld stress relief and seam annealer. Stress relief imparts desired mechanical properties on the steel. After the tubing has cooled, it is then spooled onto storage or shipping drums. Coiled tubing string is hydro tested for 15 minutes. Pipe is then purged with nitrogen. Laboratory testing. End of each string is tested for physical properties. Inside sections taken from prior data. Full sections pull tested. Micro hardness and heat affected zone and its seam. Measures strength and elongation. Load testing provides graph of stress versus strain. This testing ensures the pipe has correct strength and ductility, elongation that occurs from reaching yield point to ultimate tensile load.